Sachin, can you mute everyone? Yes. yes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the investor meet uh, for the Q2 uh, of financial year's 25 earning call. Uh, I request everyone to please uh, keep your mic on mute uh, so that we do not have disturbance in between. Um, I'd like to introduce the uh, team, the leadership team from PACA Limited. Um, we have Mr. Ved Krishna, uh, who is uh, leading the group. Uh, and he's the vice chairman of the company. Uh, we have Mr. Jagdeep Hira, uh, who is the India business head, and he's the managing director of the company. Uh, we have uh, uh, Satish Chamavelamani. He's leading the innovations, uh, uh, innovations part of uh, the company, uh, and also working in the US for uh, US sales. Um, we have uh, uh, Mrs. Neetika Shurevanshi. Uh, she is the finance lead uh, and India CFO. Um, and we have Sachin, uh, uh, Sachin Srivastava, who is the company se secretary. I would also like to introduce uh, uh, Mr. Gautam Ghosh, uh, who is the executive director uh, and also leading the uh, uh, HR uh, in India. And uh, Mr. Rolando Yon, uh, who has joined us in PACA Guatemala as the group CFO. So, uh, Welcome everyone to the call. I would uh, like to uh, hand over, I'd like to start the presentation now. Before starting the presentation, I request uh, Rolando, you want to give a brief introduction of himself. Thank you, uh, Sachin. Um, hi, uh, good morning. My name is uh, Rolando John. As mentioned, uh, uh, I am based out of uh, Guatemala. Uh, over 25 years of experience uh, in uh, multinational national companies and over 15 uh, Rolando, you're on mute. I think Sachin managed to mute everyone. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, I don't know uh, until uh, so I'll start again. I'll start again. Um, so yeah, good morning. My name is Rolando Yon. As mentioned, I'm based out of uh, Guatemala. Um, I uh, have a degree in finance and economics from Suffolk University, and uh, just finished a master's degree in management from Harvard University. Um, um, I, I have uh, worked uh, in investment banking uh, uh, out of uh, the U.S. And uh, after that, I went into corporate finance, what I've been doing for the last uh, 20 years and last 15 years as CFO of uh, uh, multinational companies. Uh, um, and I just recently joined PACA around three months ago, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here and um, looking forward uh, to this interaction. Thank you. Thank you, Rolando. Uh, Wade, you want to open the call and then we can start the presentation. Yes, super. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you all as always for joining in. Uh, really pleasure to get your questions and your guidance. Uh, we'll keep ours as short as we can so that we can jump into your ideas. Uh, yeah, back to you, Pranay. Let's uh, get going. Yeah. Uh, so, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. Um, so, um, just for the benefit of the uh, new investors who have joined us, joined us, uh, we'll just start with a short company video which outlines our vision.
So I like to uh, hand it over to uh, Jabeep sir for India business performance. So we do. Thank you, Rone. Nice with you. Uh, namaste all. Uh, I would like to take you through the India business performance for Q2. Yes, sir. And can we move the slide? So happy to share. Uh, this is uh, fourth year in line. Uh, we have been awarded Great Place to Work uh, by Great Place to Work uh, Systems. Uh, this is th third certification in four years we have received, and this is uh, we we stand within top twenty in the mid mid segment uh, manufacturing industries. Next, we keep moving. So again, uh, as our values define the diversity as well, one of the core values is diversity, and uh, we also have been certified as a place for uh, most preferred uh, workplace for the women who be working with us. And we also take take a leap in hiring and inducting new new uh, energies, new set of skills, uh, especially for the women and uh, disabled persons. On the key highlights uh, for the quarter, the productivity. So there's a 9% growth quarter on quarter basis from 13,600 tons to 15, uh, from uh, 12,500 tons to 13.6 K tons. And new products in the molded have been launched, beverage cups, four inches Rona and three CP. So this happened during the quarter. On the ecological front uh, footprints, we we have surpassed the uh, uh, highest recovery ever, uh, which is operating at 95.5. So we were at around 95%. And this is sort of uh, in the similar industries, we, we are set of setting a benchmark for ourselves as to cross those benchmark in the coming days. On the financials, uh, export volumes, uh, as, as the market is pretty low over two quarters, so we are more inclined towards moving to exports. In Q2, we have done around 35% of exports over Q1, which was 28% of the total volume. Yeah, 
these are the three products. I think uh, you might have encountered with these three products while using the compostable uh, delivery, uh, sorry, uh, the QSRs or at some launches. So beverage cup, uh, four inches Rona and three CP trays have been launched, natural trays particularly. On the business financial update, top line is 16% higher than quarter on quarter basis and 8% higher from uh, similar uh, same quarter last year. On the bottom line is 36% higher from Q1 and 18% higher from Q2 of last year. So on uh, segment wise results, uh, on the pulp and paper side, which is wrap and carry, uh, we are 20% 20% uh, higher than uh, uh, last quarter and around 28% higher on the PVD. <laughs> so this this has been a key focus for us over years, and the team is working to build up the market, the customer base. Though the revenue was uh, lesser by 5%. Uh, just because of we had some plant shut in, in the molded segment and the support functions, but the PBT has been higher by 1.5x over Q1 of this financial year, which is 75x. So, uh, taking you through for what we are trying to do, uh, we have been trying to expand our market on the global uh, landscape. So Middle East partners have been onboarded. Australia is underway. So we are moving more on the molded side, more or more on global landscape, which is Southeast Asia and uh, Australia. So both the partners are key resource, would be key resource for us to taking the much, uh, uh, much bigger jump on the revenue generation and bottom line. Uh, again, the products also we are. Uh, we have launched three products in a Q2, but we are really focused on launching new designs of product, which innovation team will let you through. And then on the domestic side also, we were operating in tier one cities, metros majorly. Now we are expanding our territories to tier two cities as well. We have appointed resellers over there. So the volume seems to be going good in the coming times. On the wrap and carry, uh, as, as we have taken it from 28% to 35%, 16 new customers have been on, onboarded in the exports, and we continue to increase the volumes for exports. Uh, a good news on the Jagriti project. So though it happened in October, so this is the main uh, crux of uh, taking any project, any greenfield or a brownfield project, forward. So there is open hearing taking account of all the nearing surround, surrounding uh, people, villages. So we have uh, done that open hearing, uh, public, which is public hearing by the pollution board and the, by the administration, which has been okayed by both of the communities and the papers have been moved to MOEF for the final approval. So on the uh, again on the Jagriti project, which we are investing heavily. So the back end, which which is a water treatment section that has already been installed to handle the updated production coming up with the Jagriti. So these are the glimpse of what we are trying to do. I'll hand over to Satish for what we are trying to do on the innovation side. Thank you. Thank you, Jagdeep Bhai. Um, so the last month, uh, the focus has been predominantly on delivery container range. We have had a significant breakthrough with the lid development. Um, we are in the very advanced stages of uh, completing the product range for the bowels. And um, in addition to what you see on the screen, we also have um, meal trays that are coming up, coming up, and that will also be planned at the same time as uh, the delivery container launch. Um, Sachin, there is a, the second half. Okay, great. And um, the most anticipated development, um, which is our 
flexible films. We have uh, uh, hit a really good trial um, opportunity for teabag, the outer wrap of the teabag use case um, with our existing M1 and M3. And this is in addition to our existing uh, supplies that are going to our customers, the, the, um, the chocolate customers that we have already been supplying. There's a, a bright spot with M1 and M3. Um, and um, we are also moving with a lot more focused on non metalized development. So we, we expect uh, good results over the next few months on this one now. Sachin, we can move. Uh, so over to you, Wade, for international update. Yep, please go ahead. Yep, so just quickly, uh, the international side, uh, we are seeing Rolando here. We also have Ramesh, who's joined in as our digitization lead, and we also have Nylan McPain, who's joined us as global marketing lead, and she'll uh, be leading. Marketing comes in with a lot of experience on the consumer side as well as on the B2B side. Let's go ahead. Uh, as uh, Satish talked about, there is a delivery takeaway range and that is under finalization and that will not just be for the Indian market. We are also looking at the US market and the range will be finalized in the next month. So by the time we meet in the next quarter, we will have a very strong patented delivery solution for the market, which has been something we've been on the drawing board for a while. Uh, Satish, of course, uh, as you're seeing, you guys uh, know Satish by now, and uh, he's been leading Chuck in India. And has, uh, so those of you who don't know, Satish actually has a very rich background. He worked for about 12 years with 3M uh, in uh, US, and uh, he's just come back to US uh, to support the US growth now, and is leading the molded fiber business and also leading the R&D side right now as we transition, there are some big transitions we are doing on the R&D side. Um, as far as the fundraise goes, the investor presentations have been on way. We've reached the second stage with some investors, and there has been some uh, kind of question marks raised on the risk side, which the mitigation has been initialized, and we feel that in the next three months, we will be in very good shape for the fundraise in the North America side. The US roadmap has been created uh, again uh, for the launch of molded fiber, and we are doing it in two broad categories, launching the current substrates that we already have as Chuck, and then building a US centric takeaway delivery container range, uh, which will be launched in the subsequent quarter, which is in the last quarter of this year, January onwards. We've also uh, so thought about the OEM manufacturing for the uh, North American expansion. Uh, earlier, it was all about our own products, but what we've initiated right now is to also have partial OEM manufacturing in the Guatemala plant so that the capacity is fully utilized. Um, so, Rolando, over to you uh, to take us through the project cover updates. Thank you. Um, next slide, please. Um, is my slide visible? No, nope, we're still on my slide, Pranay. Is it now? Nope, you may have to unshare and share again. Sorry, just a sec. Is it visible now? Nope, my screen is dark. No. Yes, it's visible. Now it's, it's visible. visible. Okay, okay, yes. go ahead. Rolando, if you can see, yeah, we can see it now. No, no I, I can't see my screen is black as well, but I have the slides here. Um, I yeah, can. We can see it now, so it should be coming on yours as well. Okay, perfect. So um, the, the, the 
Project Kawok uh, is a project that we are building in uh, Guatemala. Um, this is a timeline uh, of uh, the project and where we are on. Um, the latest progress, uh, we already have secured uh, the raw materials, that is the, the bagasse. Uh, we already have uh, MOUs in place, signed uh, with th three sugar mills uh, in Guatemala. Uh, the land uh, where we are planning to set up the factory has already, already been chosen and all the necessary studies have been uh, done. Uh, we have engaged um, uh, Nomura uh, as a financial advisor in order to um, help us raise the equity necessary uh, for the build of this project. Um, in terms of people, uh, we have already started the, the staffing in Guatemala, where we already have a business head, uh, PMO, HR head, and uh, uh, an engineering um, uh, team um, as well. The purchase of the land is almost done. Uh, we should be signing that uh, within the next 10, 14 days maximum. And uh, we have we are all almost done as well with the basic engineering studies. Um, so uh, uh, um, in terms of equity raise, we plan to finish that uh, uh, late uh, 2024, early 2025. And once we do that, uh, the commissioning of the project is going to last two years. Uh, and uh, we should be going live uh, Q1 2027. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is just a rendering uh, of the entrance of the of the project. Um, uh, what we are aiming for is to have um, a best in class um, uh, facility in Guatemala. Uh, it's important to mention that um, this facility will be uh, under a tax free regime uh, in Guatemala. So the Guatemalan government in order to um, uh, uh, push foreign investment has this type of incentives uh, for foreign companies. So that will be an advantage uh, for this project as it will be free of uh, income tax as well as uh, uh, VAT uh, uh, tax. Next slide, please. And this is just a render of the overall um, um, facility. Um, as, as as you can see, there we have all raw material uh, on the on the uh, far end of the slide, as well as on the right hand side of the the slide. Uh, that's our pit. Uh, you can see there the towers. Uh, that's the power generation uh, um, uh, plants. And on the left-hand side, those are the paper uh, 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 production uh, uh, machinery uh, houses. And that will be the Thank update you, for the project. Thank you. Yeah, uh, over to you, Nitika, for key issues and finance updates. Thank you, Pranay. Uh, this is a summary of our performance. I would request that we take the numbers for FY24-25 as indicated because these are analyzing the returns from the first two quarters. Uh, the industry averages also would be slightly uh, not exact because some of the corporations have not yet declared their results. But this has been picked up from screener, hence I made the disclaimer here. I would request you, Pranay, to move to the next slide. We warmly welcome our new institutional investors. We thank you for your support and your trust in us, and we look forward to growing with you together. Yeah, we'll you you. yeah we can move to the, uh, just click once more so that uh, I also get the, yeah. So basically just a quick update on what we had committed to in quarter two and where are we on that and what do we do plan to do in quarter three. Uh, the sales in America has been initiated uh, and we are now building the distributor network. I think we've signed on about five distributors. The target is to do about 10 in this quarter 
and then start at least getting a few container loads over. Uh, and I think you will see significant uh, shift in the actual cash flows that will come in from North America in the next uh, quarter. As I said before, we've also initiated some OEM partnerships to build products for others as well. Uh, the flexible sales, again, uh, was something that we were targeting. I mean, we are now moving towards metallized solutions uh, earlier. And this is, as Satish said, it will be more initially more for the tea bag segment, uh, which is the tea pouch. Those are the orders we are getting uh, now, and the trials are underway already. And in terms of the delivery solutions, it's almost uh, complete, and uh, it's taken a little longer than what we had anticipated, but this is going to be something that uh, hopefully will may be a game changer again for the planet uh, because there's a lot of plastics being used in the delivery space and the takeaway space. Um, in terms of the, uh, again, building the uh, clear, clear uh, business plan, uh, the roadmap has been built. Uh, Satish again has moved to US and the initiation of sales has started. We've also become started becoming much more robust and global in our organization structure. As you see here, Rolando joins in, although he's part of the Guatemala team, but internally he leads the group finance. Uh, Nylon uh, leads the uh, marketing uh, globally, uh, and we have others uh, like digitization lead who are more global uh, people. And uh, then we, of course, have uh, country specific teams now, and these structures are being put in place, <laughs> as well as um, alignment of incentivization is happening right now. Um, as uh, one was one commitment was a lead investor in Kawok that is a little bit behind for sure. Uh, but the risk mitigation that the investors have pointed out are being done right now, and they basically wanted more detailed engineering, uh, some clear uh, offtake contracts, uh, the, the final cost in terms of the RFQs being done. So we feel that in the next three months, three to four months, we should be able to complete that. So as uh, told by Rolando, I think by March, we should be in a good place for investment uh, for Kawok. In terms of uh, Jagriti, uh, very good shape again. Uh, the ordering has been completed. I think some things were going beyond our targeted date. And I think uh, Jagdeep and the team have really sped that up. Uh, so that is going to be, uh, we are getting to be on track for Jagrati completion by the end of 2025, which is going to give us a lot of push also on the flexible side. Uh, so that's uh, the update and Q3 plans. I think that's it from our side and uh, we are open to questions. So back to Pranay and he will guide that uh, yeah, part of it. Thank you all. Thank you, Ved. Um, I will uh, request if you have questions, you can just press your hand raise button and we'll come to you. Please limit your questions to uh, two only. Um, and if we have more time, we'll circle back to you later on in the call. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Manadi, you have a question. You can go ahead with your question, please. Hi, thank you. First of all, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Um, so one question, um, you know, is more around Ramji here. Uh, you know, so we have a lot of, uh, you know, he has, I don't know if he stepped down or how is it, but he's been involved in a lot of delivery containers, formulation of delivery containers and the NM uh, in your flex, uh, Flexi. So and many other stages, many other development products which are in advanced stages. Now with investor funds coming in, how do you, you know, shape up the R&D function and to avoid too many chums and find out a stable and a strong team. How is it going? Well, that's a very important question and it's something we've really been dealing uh, with in the last month, especially. Uh, Ramji and us have decided to part ways and uh, partly uh, it was <laughs> mainly because of uh, some lack that we were finding constantly in the commercialization side. The science was still OK, uh, but the commercialization was weak. And uh, finally, we decided that it's better to kind of bite the bullet and uh, make the changes. But the rest of the team remains. And Satish, who was very much a part of that de development, has been part of that journey alongside Ramji for a while. He stepped in in the interim. Uh, this is a big step for us, Manadi. So, so in terms of we know that PACA's growth in the future is going to be based on R&D. So part of our debate 
constantly right now is that where should our R&D be? Where is the right talent? And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in the last uh, couple of months, that's been very, very uh, strongly being debated internally. Uh, we are still not in a place where we can say that this is exactly where it's going to be. What we have done is that we've identified the key areas where we want to work. Uh, there are eight directions that we want to take, both in product and process. And uh, we feel that ultimately what we are debating is what works best for PACA as a global entity and where the talent is uh, and where we can do maximum justice to it. So there is going to be some pivots. There is going to be some tough decision making for us, but it will all be in the interest of making sure that we deliver on the promises that we are making to ourselves and to uh, our customers. Right. OK. Uh, second question. So, um, I, you know, I was also there on the Balrampur call and where we came to know about the bio policy that the UP government has come uh, has given now, which has led to now say a buy so a product like a PLA, which was more expensive than a compostable product. But having said this, now the scheme coming in um, will obviously make it competitive because there are a lot of benefits. So is PACA also eligible for these benefits and are we taking anything for Jagriti? Uh, or how are we shaping it? It's a good question. Balrampur is much better at it than us, but Gautam is here. So Gautam and Sachin are the people for that domain. I think Sachin looks at the legal side, Gautam looks at more the liaison side. So I think together, maybe we take a target, Sachin and Gautam. I think that's a good point. Balrampur has definitely done a lot of good work with the government. Uh, and that said, um, uh, Manali, I presume you know this, but uh, we are very much part of the Balrampur journey. And we have yeah. strong collaboration with them, not just on the raw material side, but also on the PLA side. We continue to dabble with PLA. Part of their sales is going to be to us. Uh, okay. So that is that is an absolute uh, direction that you know Vivek, uh, Avantika, and us are taking. Uh, and Stefan, who's come in as their CEO, has been an old friend of ours uh, as well. So so you know so that's uh, those those are very collaborative ventures. Uh, but that said, yeah, they've been much better at, at at finding the government backing than we have been. So we will, we will look into it. That's a great idea. There could be more support, uh, Sachin and Gautam, and maybe we should take up take this up uh, as we go along. So good point, uh, and then we'll take it up. So just uh, just understanding. Currently, there are no benefits that come to PACA for Jagriti, right? No, no, there are no, no, there uh, are significant benefits, but yeah, Sachin. Sorry. Just want to add up uh, that we okay. are we are in process to uh, contact with the UP government and we are in process to apply letter of comfort from UP government. So about handed codes, uh, in, uh, capital incentive we are going to get in this Jagati project. So it's uh, over the period of 12 years, but uh, lump sum according to the current policy, it is about handed codes benefit. Okay. So right now, Manali, it's just as per the government policy, nothing above and beyond. But Rampur has gone ahead and is significantly above and beyond that. Right. Based right. on their biopolymer. They've created a whole biopolymer park, et cetera, et cetera. So such it will be good to study that. Uh, and clearly they are better at it than we are. So so it's right. a good point. It's a good learning for us. I think such in good to study that and let's not think that it is only going to be the policy, which has been our thinking internally. Right. So so let's go beyond that. There is more and that I can be for sure. Right, and I just have uh, one more Manali, question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, we'll circle back to you um, okay, so that okay. everyone gets the chance. Yeah, thank you. Um, Siddhant, you can have your question. Mr. Siddhant, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, if you're speaking, you are on mute. He says he's under Pranay, control. Keep moving. Okay. Um, yeah, Sachin, maybe you can check if you are able to unmute him. No, I'm not able to do it. Uh, okay. Um, so, Mr. Siddhant, you can put your question in the chat and then we can respond to you. I'll move on. Um, Mr. Sayam, you can unmute yourself and uh, go ahead with your question. Yeah. Yeah, you are already. Yeah. 
so my uh, my first question is uh, regarding the uh, wrap and carry sale like we see that there is a, a question in india around the quick commerce section the zeptos and blinkit and swiggy is the out of the world you know are like growing crazily and they are only using the paper bags so what's uh, our strategy on that uh, area how are we targeting that growth and that uh, demand are we there in the market and uh, if yes uh, what's the scale and uh, you know uh, the future prospects of that thing uh, that thing and secondly uh, since we have uh, cracked the uh, hot delivery model of the uh, uh, with the pulp based packaging that you know we can now have these hot containers also as we have just said so what is the expected demand uh, in the indian food delivery segment what will the market size and uh, how much share we you know we could target and uh, just an idea of the demand in the market size of the delivery segment thank you i'll take up this so q q uh, commerce is expanding heavily rightly said uh, that's a different segment of uh, rap and carry what they are using our our operating operating field is totally different from q commerce so they are more more on to a carry heavy weight carry but we are on to a lightweight wrap and carry having said that that's not our focus market as of now on the delivery we uh, we are developing a 100% leak proof uh, solution which should uh, get done by a month's time uh, the market is huge. We are begging heavily on the uh, delivery segment. Satish, do you any, want to add any more? Expected, any, any expected timeline where we could start seeing sales from that segment, uh, from the delivery segment? We are, uh, I, I, let me take this up. Um, we are on track for a, a Jan, late Jan, early February launch uh, with, with the complete range. And um, um, the market again, as as we look at it, it's anywhere between five hundred million dollars to about a billion dollars. That's the size of the market. I'm not saying we're going to capture, or we will be able to capture everything of it, um, but we are putting our best foot forward. Um, and and again, we would try to maximize our capacity of production there. Um, we are definitely taking the time to get it right. So. The first attempt with the existing delivery container, we got it up to like say 90% um, in terms of performance. And the last person, last 10 percent has been pretty difficult. We are getting there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you uh, Mr. Vignesh, you can go ahead and ask your question. I'm audible. Yes, you are audible. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, yeah. Uh, so, my question is on Jagriti side again. So, if I understand, uh, our timeline is similar to what it was in uh, as per the quarter one call, right? I, I mean, uh, I joined a plate. So, we might commission uh, by end of quarter four or start of quarter one, right? True. It's end of quarter uh, four, uh, quarter three of, uh, next year. Okay, I mean, uh, the reason is I uh, I went through the balance sheet. The CWIP is quite small, so uh, I mean, uh, our procurement uh, has already started and would happen. Uh, everything would get happened in uh, like three four months. That is what I want to understand because forty crore CWIP, seven hundred crores project. If I'm not wrong. So as as we mentioned in the presentation, all orders have uh, have have been done. Uh, post technical and commercial negotiations. So, all orders are fixed. okay. Uh, and uh, again, uh, relating to this project, do we have any soft commitments that is that has come to us from our existing clients, or do we have any you know tie up already in place uh, with uh, the new clients? I mean, to just to get understanding of uh, you know what what would be the usual timeline. Uh, to uh, you know, uh, in the process of negotiation to get a client, or uh, just to understand the ramp up side of it. Uh, good question, Mr. Siddharth. Uh, our existing uh, customer uh, bank is too strong. 
and the similar products are being used by them also and they are demanding right away they are demanding for the similar product what we are going to produce so forward looking statement is we already have the customer base and we don't see any glitches coming out of the sales portal okay right sir right sir. got it uh, and all the best sir thank you thank you sir thank you uh, mr rishi you can go ahead and ask a question hello am i audible yeah okay my question is direct and simple i would like the revenue guidance profit guidance and margin guidance for the next quarter uh rishi <laughs> uh, <laughs> we we are doing, doing to best uh, best of our efforts to uh, raise up our own set bars uh, having said that we look forward for a, a good uh, i would say uh, good efforts from the team across india and globe bothly you you might have listened to satish ved and me that how we are proceeding for the next quarters as well so uh, committing any figures won't be good at this platform not a commitment but a figure that you look up to this is promising hope i answered yes thank you uh mr siddhant your question uh, your you can ask your question now if your error is resolved now yeah uh, hi everyone sorry for the technical error uh, hope everyone is doing well uh, just had a couple of questions uh, firstly before i get started i just wanted to uh, reconfirm what was said during the presentation the jagrati timeline the completion is expected by 2025 end correct that's the correct number i heard yeah Oh, okay. So now I'll move on with my question. Now regarding Jagrati only, uh, could you give us uh, a breakdown? Uh, basically, first a projection of the revenue for the project, and then a breakdown within the different segments in within the project only, and then the margins also, if you can, with for each segment in project Jagrati. So that will be too elaborated a report. I think you can connect, connect offline, and then uh, Nitika can advise you on the uh, looking forward. But the growth is going to be multifold, post uh, uh, achieving nine, at least ninety percent of efficiency of the plant. Oh, I didn't get that. What you said in the end. So I said, post com uh, commissioning and achieving ninety percent of efficiency of the plant, uh, the growth is going to be multifold. Okay, right. And uh, you said regarding the breakdown within segments, I can connect offline, right? And then I'll be able yeah. to get that number. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Long, long okay. okay, yeah, that, that, so, so that's just, fine. Uh, Siddhant, uh, adding yeah. from my side, there's not that many segments in terms of the expansion. Jagriti is fundamentally focused on flexible packaging, and the base product for that is a greaseproof paper. So what we plan to do is start with a greaseproof paper. And that's what Jagdeep said before, that the buyers are already there. They are waiting for the product so that we don't have an issue with sales. And then we continue to enhance our capability in flexible packaging and raising the bar. And as Jagdeep said, you know, there's going to be a significant uh, change in terms of the revenue numbers. And hopefully the bottom line will follow suit as well. So those are the two segments primarily focused on flexible packaging, but starting with greaseproof. Okay, got that, got that. Thank you for that. Now, my second question would be uh, related to the compostable metallized packaging. Now, uh, I want to understand from your point of view, what do you think the viability of, uh, I'm sorry for the disturbance, but I, what the viability of this kind of packaging would be? Because we know that for compostable packaging, you need a circular economy. And in India, we don't have a circular economy. So could you comment on what you think the viability could be? Yeah, so first things first, uh, let's talk about the circularity part of it. So any product that PACA creates has to follow four broad principles. The first is that it has to be home compostable. So, so that comes from the idea that we cannot control people's behavior. People might throw it here and there, and it has to be beneficial to the soil wherever it is thrown. 
So that's the first uh, rule that we have. The second one is it has to be able to be recycled in the paper stream because paper is collected 70 to 80 percent. Uh, polymers that are petroleum based are collected 7 to 8 percent. Paper can be converted back to paper. Petroleum polymers are typically they become fiber and they become your polyester shirts. So and then, you know, and that's also 7 to 8 percent. So so that's the second rule. The third is marine safe and the fourth is terrestrial safe. So we want to make sure the toxicity level is such that it doesn't harm either marine life or terrestrial life. A cow consumes it, a fish consumes it, it should not be harmful for life. We feel as humans that is our responsibility. So those are absolutes for us. We don't compromise on it when we launch any product. So any product that PACA has will adhere to these four ideas and they are not easy to achieve. Uh, the second part in terms of uh, competence, uh, it all depends on what the customer is willing to accept. So, of course, in an ideal world, the customer wants the product to be better and cheaper. That's obvious. Uh, but there is a lot of other value that a sustainable product creates in terms of brand value and in terms of uh, customer, uh, in the benefits uh, for the consumer in terms of their acceptability of the product. What we are finding is there are always people who are ready to take the jump and uh, and then come into the segment for their own kind of desire. And we've had that with the first customer that we've had and now significant T players are coming in who are very, very clear that they want to go for this. The first product that we are selling in US is almost uh, 5X of our paper sales, the cost, and the customer is happily taking that so as we grow forward, we know that the uh, price and the cost is going to change, but we do find enough acceptability from the, uh, the, the first customers who want to take the step. I hope that helps. Okay, thank you for that. I'll rejoin the queue for more questions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hiren, you can ask your question. Uh, hi. Thank you for the opportunity and the Pakka is always a great company to track because every month there is some exciting uh, developments. Uh, so my question is, uh, first question is on the flexible packaging. Uh, I was uh, listening to your uh, Good Garbage podcast and where JMJ Green Paper uh, from owner, uh, he said that that uh, they have also uh, developed the rice uh, brand based uh, product and uh, they are also going to be with the 23 manufacturing location across the us china india and i think they have done also uh planning to come with the product in 2025 uh which can they what they are boasting that they that can replace the polyethylene packaging and also uh scale is also very good i think 0.3 million something they are saying uh, so my uh, question is that because we are also going on uh, all the uh, growth strategies also on the based on the flexible packaging and specifically in the US market. Uh, so now coming up with this uh, 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 competitive products also and based on the other uh, raw materials also are, are our uh, manufacturing supply chain and business model would be such that that based on the recent development in the R&D, we would be able to, if required, switch or the uh, our packaging or our product solution and how we are going to uh, position our uh, product. Uh, and what is that uh, first uh, uh, feedback from uh, the US market, how our uh, product has been, uh, uh, that feedback we have received. Yeah, so the first uh, range of products that we have launched commercially, it's got a little layer of two nanometers of metallization. Uh, but we knew that that's an interim product. It's not the final product because uh, when we are producing at scale in Guatemala, we're going to be producing over 330 tons a day of flexible packaging. In Ayodhya, we're going to be producing over 125 tons a day. So metallizing at that scale creates a lot of uh, challenge. Apart from that, you know, the consumer may not see it, but we see it that, you know, all transfer metallization happens through a polyethylene sheet. So there's a lot of waste that gets created. And we, you know, again, we are a little utopian in our thinking. We also feel bauxite mining for that metal is not a great idea. So, you know, so we kind of go back to the whole uh, life cycle of the product. So that was the first range and there is enough acceptability that is coming there. So we are slowly, we're doing a lot of trials. Uh, we have a leader 
for the flexible packaging side, who's kind of putting that out there. Numerous trials in India, numerous trials in US uh, that are lined up now. And those trials are going to start happening in the next quarter for the metalized product. Uh, you're right that there's a lot of development that is happening, not just j and but there's a lot of other companies that we are directly working with today on non-metalized side. So in fact, the next three days, Satish, me, uh, our Guatemala team, we are all in Portland uh, with our technology uh, guides. Uh, we are eight of us. We are just uh, putting ourselves in a singular place and just brainstorming for the next three days on how the the product as well as the technology will be uh, kind of developed in the next phase. So there's a lot of development that is happening. Fundamentally, if you look at uh, packaging and its dharma, ultimately our dharma is to protect what is inside. That's the first part. We cannot compromise on that because the ecological damage that it creates, if you falter on that, you can imagine if there's a potato chips pack, then the potato chips get spoiled. So there's a huge ecological damage of that. So first and foremost, we don't compromise on that. And the second part is that of uh, the, the cost. The third part is that of making sure that it runs as the converters uh, part. Because again, if you don't, you cannot disrupt everything. You cannot disrupt the product and the supply chain. So then you use the same supply chain and make sure that it, for example, we just did, uh, Satish and the team just did some trials for tea bags. And uh, they were running petroleum polymers at 4,000 bags a minute. They ran hours in the first shot at 3,600 bags a minute, which is a great thing for us. If they can run it at the first shot at 3,600, that means they can meet 4,000. So we can run parallel uh, to the, the, the petroleum polymers. So it's, it's a step-by-step -step kind of development. We have put ourselves out there, and we are, of course, you know, part of Good Garbage is also to build these relationships. And, uh, and we are working with lots of suppliers like, like J&J to develop numerous products today. Hope that helps. Yeah, thank you. And the uh, second question is on the molded uh, products. So for the last two, three years, uh, the sales has been uh, stagnant, like between 13 to 15 crore. And as uh, already there is a, a lot of market potential, uh, but just wanted to understand because at present, I think we are utilizing 55% of the capacity and 20 TPD, which is the uh, production capacity. And I think after Jagruti also, because it would be mainly on the flexible packaging. So uh, that molded product uh, capacity would even still remain 20 TPD. Uh, so uh, because considering the huge market, so my, my, uh, the main concern is that whether there is a particular demand issue and that consumers are not uh, willing to switch from the uh, plastic disposable or uh, this uh, tableware products or uh, uh, is it that that because of the other uh, means people are uh, not able to get the price benefit uh, from those type of packaging so what would be the trigger point where we can see significant impact of the uh, on the bottom line uh, through molded products So, Hiren, uh, I think the market is growing and market has grown to a, a greater extent. Having said that, uh, there is a slow movement as per demand and the productivity. So, if we have to see so, uh, over the last four years, there were hardly 20 players in the market for the molded products. Right now, there are 69 players in the market who are producing similar stuffs on a lower unorganized sector and lower star market is going slow uh, for sure that's why as as we presented earlier that we are going global now so middle east is one where we have seen a much quantum jump we have started exporting also to middle east and we are looking australia also as a second uh, uh, area of uh, operation uh, thirdly, we were confined to majorly tier one metro cities as of now. Now, as a strategy, we are expanding our horizon to tier two cities for the growth. Okay, but we are not planning to expand capacity beyond 20 TPD, I think, after. Producing. No, uh, uh, as of now, no, but we are looking at outsourced facility. Infrastructure wise, we won't be expanding much here, so it will remain same as of now. But outsourcing model, which we have started last year, we would be expanding on those. Oh, okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. G, your question, please. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, on the similar line, on the molded uh, segment, I wanted to ask a couple of questions. One is, if at all we were to crack, say, a delivery uh, container kind of a product, and if we were able to get someone like a Swiggy or Zomato on board, wouldn't that lead to increasing utilization at our Ayodhya plant? Or, I mean, as a matter of fact or as a matter of principle, for the molded segment to really do well, we, we have to be near to the markets. Which is why the concept of you know asset light model comes into picture. I'm asking this because Zomato is spread across India. You'll have demand coming from uh, Hyderabad, Chennai, Mumbai, etc. So is it viable to produce at Ayodhya and move the products across the country, or the only answer is going to be asset light and be near to the market? Uh, can I step in? Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so a couple of uh, conceptual uh, ideas. Uh, one is uh, in terms of uh, Zomato. So Zomato has been extremely keen uh, to build this uh, with us. Uh, the the uh, challenge has been the efficacy of products. So even two, three years back, we had deep discussions uh, with Zomato, uh, but the products did not perform. So ultimately, the fault lied with us. Uh, that, you know, there is a challenge that we could not fulfill. So Zomato went to the extent where they even said that they're going to offer, because ultimately they don't govern what the restaurants are going to use, but they influence what the restaurants are going to use. So they were even thinking about, you know, becoming sustainability partners, uh, sort of make us becoming sustainability partners and then giving certain green points to uh, people who used our products. So there were various uh, explorations that happened, but we have cut a sorry figure in that case where we have not lived up to their expectations. So we only want to go back to them when we are very clear about our performance of the products that took us back to the drawing board. Uh, we've spent the last year, year and a half trying to rebuild the whole uh, thinking around the delivery space, again, experimenting in various directions. Now we feel that we can come in with another kind of range, which kind of is close, uh, closer to the goal, ultimately. Uh, your second part of the question, and I think Jatik will address it a little better than me, but I'll take the first shot at it. Ultimately, we have to look at, it. it is not the same as, a, say, a polystyrene product. Here, uh, you know, you have to be near the raw material. Anytime that we produce any product uh, for the agri residue, the raw material has 50% moisture. I need five tons of bagasse to produce one ton of material, right? So it's simple as that. So you have to be near the raw material. You cannot transport 5x to produce 1x, nor can you transport pulp. That also becomes a challenge. So the outsourcing model is, yes, partially based on the market, but more based upon, you know, where the capacity is available and the quality. You know, we've, uh, we've probably gone through 10 different outsourcing partnerships where most have failed in terms of quality. So that's a challenge that we face today. Uh, yeah, but over to Jagdeep, uh, Jagdeep, if you want to add anything to that. Uh, Mr. Jeet, uh, right now the development is, as as we mentioned, the development is at our end, innovation is happening at our end for the delivery. So the experimentation is somewhere near the innovation center. So once this product is uh, there for a commercialization, that will be brought down to Ayodhya for distribution along with other, because we are also looking for uh, associated product along with delivery for Zomato, Swiggy, so, uh, brands like that. So this will lead to sweating of those old large automatic machines, right? That we had ordered in 2018, which probably are not sweating no, as no, much no. today. No, no. So uh, it will be both combination of both, where we get a pro higher productivity on the bigger machines. We we go uh, there on the bigger machine, automatic machine, and uh, rest. So that th that configuration is already on. So which machine will produce what product? And so my second yeah, question is, what are the product right now, Jeet? A lot of the products yeah. on the delivery side are on our uh, outsource sites right now. We are not shifting any yet any production yeah. of Chandmonder. Understood. 
And so what would the NSRs for uh, something like a grease proof paper be right now today market rates as compared to your normal paper segment NSRs? It's, uh, it's almost double. Okay, so base case is going to be double if at all coating happens or does not happen. I mean, at least in the base case. Base, model. base, case, base case won't go double because you also incur some manufacturing cost in it. But delta is higher. Understood, understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sreyesh, your question, please. Mr. Sreyesh, yeah. am I audible? Yeah, I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, congratulations for great results. So I would like to know, and this year we have, till now we have done 215 CR, and uh, last year we closed around 414 CR. So can we see that uh, this year we closed around 500 plus? Mr. Sreyesh, your voice is not clear. Hello. Is it clear? Yeah. Is it better? Yeah, yeah, much better. Yeah. Yeah. So this year, till now, we have done 215 CR. And last year, we closed around 414 CR. So can we see a growth of 25% roughly? Can we see closing this year at around 515 or 520 CR? Target is to be there, but it, it seems a bit difficult. Go on to those, those percentage levels. Okay. Straight, as uh, well as just adding to Jagdeep, uh, the big jumps will happen when the projects come in play. Uh, and just now, the team is totally kind of focused and stretched on making sure that projects go well. So, of course, we want to keep the, keep the ship afloat and keep working towards uh, growth. Uh, but the big growth numbers really get into play once the project gets commissioned. Oh, correct, correct. And this year, uh, right now for this quarter, we have uh, seen a 74 lakh profit for the chuck again, the molded products. So last year, we we closed somewhat around 170, uh, 1 crore 70 lakhs. So can we see this year closing at the same figure at least for the chuck? Hopefully, yes, but we have to see the third quarter and then go forward. So right now also the chuck product is not going. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. So yeah, yeah. So right now we see the chuck product not going very well. Compared to the last year, Shish, uh, the market is not supporting that high. That's why we are looking for Middle East territories and Australia territories to expand the business there and make good top line and bottom line. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stroud, your question, please. Yeah, hi, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to ask this question and also hear the minds of the management team here. Uh, my question is, I first want to, uh, you know, just very quickly, uh, you know, verify on the plant that is coming live, you mentioned about the Ayodhya plant, uh, that is for uh, uh, flexible packaging or is it for molding? Uh, if you can just confirm that. And also you mentioned it's coming in uh, Q4 FY25, is that correct? So it will be more on the flexible, hundred percent on flexible. Okay, got it. And uh, if you could just shed some light on, uh, you know, what has been the capex that we put into the plant and uh, the kind of asset terms that we're expecting, uh, you know, at optimum capacity, and by when okay. could we uh, have some sort of a timeline for that? So the total capex cost is six seventy five. So yeah, and. Uh, 27, we are looking for a substantial growth on the uh, figures. Got it. And uh, any any indication on the kind of asset turns that we're expecting for the plant? So I think uh, we indicated earlier also 
probably you might have missed that. So it will be a multifold growth on the top and the bottom line both. In 27. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we have uh, question, repeat questions now. Uh, if you would want to question, uh, continue. Yeah, let's do another 10 minutes and then close. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Ms. Manali, your question, please. <clears throat> uh, hi. So uh, my question is now we have Middle East, you know, where we're looking at a business partnership. So, uh, sorry, not a business partnership, but for business. So how are we going to cater over here? Is it through an asset light model or the products are going to be made over here and then exported? How is this entire thing going around? Yeah, it's all production in India. It's just exports. Okay, so while we transfer these products over there, uh, doesn't that, uh, I mean, uh, lead to an increase in your cost? Or, I mean, how does the economics sit over there? Or it's like, no, okay. To answer that, ultimately, if a buyer buys and pays us good money, we sell. If they don't pay us good money, we don't sell. But Jagdeep, maybe you can answer it better. So, Manali, it's a balance of the equation. So where you get more uh, value of all your products, you operate there. So okay. You balance that equation whether to sell more in uh, Middle East or Australia or Mexico, or uh, in case you get a better value in India, you do the business there. Okay. And uh, second is I just want to uh, just want to understand. So this. Uh, uh, right now we've achieved around 13,606 MT. So year end units can be what at similar rates. And is this the effect of PM3 expansion from 70 to 80 TPD? So that's, that has not happened yet. So the okay. GPT is again in two phases. One will get commissioned in May or something, May end or something like that, uh, which will generate more of tonnage and the value for. So this is from the efficiencies. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pyrus, your question, please. Mr. Pyrus, if you can hear us, you can unmute and ask. Okay, I'll move on. Uh, Mr. Prabhakar, your question. Yeah, hi. So my question regarding to modeling. So in previous quarters, we were seeing the negative numbers. Now we are seeing the positive number. So what change made us to positive? I want to understand will it sustain further quarters or not? Two changes always come through as far as one is efficiency of the plant, which is continuously getting increased. So we had some force shutdown for maintenance workers in the plant in Q2 over Q1. Again, in second is the cost of manufacturing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sayam, your question. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity again. My, my question is to Vaid, uh, just two basic questions. First is regarding PECA Inc. How much we are looking to dilute at what valuation and how much debt will take? Basically, I want to understand the how will the balance sheet of PECA Inc. look like? Uh, uh, the balance sheet of PECA Inc. And second is around the carbon credits. Since we are, you know, uh, working towards uh, environment and, you know, uh, there are uh, rules and regulations in India and America also regarding the carbon credit policy. Are we looking for that? How much carbon credits we can get, uh, get out of these plants and the sales we are doing to create the environment and uh, what will be the monetary effect of that in the coming future regarding carbon credits? Thank you. Yes, the total cost of project for uh, Kavok, uh, that is what we call the project there, uh, is about $340 million, out of which $140 million is coming as debt, uh, sorry, as equity, and uh, the remainder $200 million as uh, debt. Uh, the debt is more or less uh, spoken for. Rolando is, of course, trying to bring in DFCs instead of banks uh, right now to lower the cost of capital. 
and uh, the the idea is to be able to wrap it up in that much. Sorry, I missed out on the second part. Maybe Rolando can add to that. As far as uh, carbon credits go, uh, we are not actively looking for that. It will be a cherry on the cake. But yes, we will we will look into it in the future. But right now, the focus is to secure the equity and then the debt, and then after that, we can look at what the possibilities are for additional benefits. Rolando, do you want to answer the second part of it? I've kind of missed out on that one. Sure. Um, I think the question was in terms of uh, dilution. Um, and uh, for for Kawok, uh, we, are, we are aiming no more than 33% uh, dilution on the project. And what is the valuation we are targeting for the fundraise? Post money valuation? The, the valuation uh give me one second the valuation of the the total project project uh should be around um uh, uh so a, a present value of around 400 million dollars sorry can you come again how much? A present value of the cash flows of around four hundred million dollars. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Siddhant. Your question. I think yeah, we'll hi. take this as the last question. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Ved, uh, just a follow up as to a uh, question uh, I had last time. So uh, you had mentioned the home compostable marine safe terrestrial safe uh, values for the uh, metallized uh, compostable packaging. So I just wanted to confirm. So this packaging of yours, the, the metallized compostable one that you develop, that is actually compostable in the pit, right? That the metal can be demineralized and however, I don't know much about the science, but it is actually the use cases there right in the compostable in the pit it can actually be composted right absolutely you've used the exact term demineralized uh, it actually oh. the, the metal becomes demineralized and it breaks down into uh, the the softer components again and it becomes environmentally right. benign not beneficial and the right. metal oh. itself is less than 5% anyways of the product okay less than 5% and then on uh, that packaging only could you give us a cost differential between that packaging and uh, right now the alternatives in the market for flexi pack like normal metallized which is not compostable and maybe plastic film so can you give us a cost differential yeah so right now on the m3 so we have two products in the market m1 is a little bit of a glossy substance with a different structure that's almost double of uh, the current substrates uh, in terms of pricing uh, in terms of M3 that we are now kind of pushing, it's a little less glossy, more organic looking uh, product and a different chemistry on the uh, on the on the on the barrier side. Uh, that's about 30 to 40 percent higher uh, than the current petroleum uh, based substrates. OK, got that. And just my final question would be uh, on Guatemala. Uh, I'm. It was being discussed uh, right now, but if you could uh, give me uh, an update regarding the fundraise as to what's happening, uh, what the update on that is the equity versus the debt, like where we are in the process. And secondly, could you reconfirm the amount paid for the la land acquisition in Guatemala? That's all. Yeah, so the land itself is about 1.7 million. Uh, we haven't paid anything yet, but next week is when we're expecting to pay ideally the entire amount uh, to, to transfer the land to our name. Uh, the equity raise, as I said in the beginning, is ongoing. Uh, the investors have raised some concerns on the risk side of the project, so we are securing that, and it's mainly around more detailed engineering, ordering of equipment or finalizing of the actual cost, uh, and on offtakes, those are the big ones, and also some things, some, some on the IP side, they wanted to type our IPs, that are currently resting in the Indian uh, holding company, they want it to rest in the US company where they would uh, invest in. So, so that's something we are also exploring. Uh, in terms of the debt, uh, banks have already committed to the debt, uh, Guatemalan banks and uh, the local Colombian banks there. Uh, but that said, uh, with 
uh, Rolando coming in. Uh, we are we are looking to lower the cost of debt itself as well. And we've started talking to a lot of DFCs uh, to come in and then they are being very, very positive too. Uh, so we are looking at about uh, March timeline for uh, the, the equity and then uh, subsequently the debt will come very quickly because that's already committed. Okay, thank you. I just want to confirm Rolando had given the figure for 400 million. That was for the Guatemala valuation only, right? Yeah, that's, that's the correct. net present. present. Yeah, net present on a net present value basis. Net present value and it doesn't include the terminal value. If we include the terminal value, then it will come up to around 600 million present value, something like that. Okay, okay. okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I know we have some more questions. You can send those to us and we'll get back to you uh, individually. Um, and just a closing note uh, from you, Wait. Yeah, thank you all so much. It's always a joy to connect with you. Thank you again for all your support uh, that is coming our way. And uh, we, we will, as we say each time, we will leave no stones unturned from our side to make sure that the trust that you've bestowed on us is, uh, is is worked on and made sure that we um, make sure that we live up to your expectations. So thank you all. Namaskar. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. So